So you see, I'm going to speak of, uh, continue with uh, what Claudia started, gender in the sustainable development agenda. The sustainable development goals, which as you can see here, address all these areas about economic development, peace, partnership, the earth and the people. And how gender comes into this picture, both in terms of research and in terms of stakeholder engagement and in terms of policy development and implementation. You know, the sustainable development agenda was the, the goals, the 17 goals and, their, and its accompanying targets and indicators. They were approved last year. And also last year, uh, the, the Paris Convention of the COP uh, reached some kind of agreement on, against climate change. And then we have this year in October in Quito, uh, the agreement on the new urban agenda. So we have these three big interrelated agendas for sustainable development and how they land in the building of our cities. So what I'm working on in some of my research projects and my experience throughout the years is on how to implement gender in this, in this area of action. I'm a, an architect and a city planner, and my expertise is on gender. And uh, uh, let, let's start off, how is gender as of today uh, into these uh, agendas? In the sustainable development agendas, you know that uh, there is a, no, oh, there is a freestanding goal on gender, which is number five, uh, uh, here it's a summary of what it says. Uh, and then throughout the remaining 17, except for these two on life on, on water and, and life on land, which also has gender dimensions, but this has less. Uh, but all the rest do have very significant gender dimensions which are not properly addressed as of today within the both technical, political and stakeholder development of of, that has reached this agreement of the goals. So now the implementation will have to improve this. And uh, when we go to the new urban agenda, and I have been a very active participant in the process at the UN, uh, I was only last month in New York in the, in the stakeholders' uh, hearings with member states discussing the draft zero, uh, it's exactly the same thing. There has been a very, very active uh, expert participation of women's and, and gender experts, and also a very active participation of grassroots women's associations uh, with very strong recommendations, some of which were taken on board by UN Habitat, but then now in the negotiations that are taking place after that, with the participation of, of member states, they are watering down everything. And not only gender, also other things. For instance, something that was new to this agenda and which relates very much to the to the overall idea of democratization that uh, the previous speaker was referring to is the idea of the right to the city, which was an innovation of, the, of Habitat 3 with respect to Habitat 1 and Habitat 2. And it appears that this uh, commitment of member states with the right to the city is going to disappear from the text of the new urban agenda as, as, as the text is today. So uh, these are some of the documents that have been gender inputs, uh, really good quality. And I would say that of all the stakeholder participations in this process, both technical and grassroots, the gender and women participation has been one of the most effective. Um, and this, of course, uh, is something that has to do with a wealth of research on the topic that has been created in Europe and, and in the US and I have been working on this area for almost 20 years now. I published this, uh, this manual on how to integrate gender in urban planning already six, uh, more, 12 years ago. And then uh, three years ago, we published this uh, edited compilation on, on what's the state of, of practice and of research on gender in planning and city building in Europe. Um, so all these policy uh, developments are building, of course, in this wealth of knowledge because uh, men and women, because of their gender roles or human beings, when they adopt or have in their lives different gender roles, uh, have different needs in the city. They use the city in different ways because, uh, as of today, it's mostly a division among men, men and women, but it has to do with gender roles in society. And, um, important concepts that get into how we understand city building from a gender perspective include a very important concept, which is the concept of, of care. Care of, of dependents, of the young, of the old, of sick people, of people who have some kind of uh, diminished functionality in their bodies and they need to be taken care of. And also the care of the household. House, uh, houses and homes don't um, 
don't function if somebody is not doing certain things day by day, on a daily basis in daily life. And this work, these gender divisions of, labors, of labor has been uh, studied very much by the, gender, uh, uh, by the field of knowledge on gender. How do we translate this into, into understanding our cities, our architecture, how we build uh, the, the built environments? So there are a, a number of, of uh, concepts that are relevant to this, the concept of care, uh, gender roles and norms and gender identities, the sexual division of labor, the double load of work, which uh, today is mostly, um, uh, it's mostly women who, who, who suffer it, uh, intersectionality, how uh, divisions and, uh, and discriminations on, based on gender intersect with other sources of inequality, such as race or age or economic and social uh, status. And then, of course, gender biases and stereotypes, which is a very important thing in specifically in the field of research. And then, of course, uh, power relationships, as uh, uh, the previous speaker was mentioning, gender is a very important area for, for this. Um, and I'm going to illustrate this with an example, which, which comes from transport, and it's been introduced in the, in the RI tool toolkit. And, and it's a result of a research project that I did for the Spanish uh, Ministry of Public Works. And it's, uh, I had to analyze, they asked me to analyze the transportation statistics from a gender point of view. So I, I analyzed how the data were collected, were, what concepts and categories were being used, from a gender perspective, applying all these concepts that I just listed briefly, and some others. And then I came out, and after the, I had finished the work and so on, then after a few months, I realized, well, it seems that there's, there's something hidden here, uh, because normally, if you look at this chart, uh, on the left, you see the normal, this is very standard way of collecting transportation statistics. And you see hidden into these headings like um, buying, leisure, strolling, visiting, accompanying others, and, and others. Uh, many of these trips are in fact trips that main, mainly women do to take care of others and for the house. And so and I had this idea of saying, what if we give this a name? And I, I propose this umbrella term, uh, mobility of care, the mobility related to care activities and this would give it visibility. R creating visibility, naming things, names, words create reality, creates way of, ways of understanding the world, and what doesn't have a name doesn't have an existence for most people. So it's very important to be able to name things. And this category allows for an, a better understanding of the travel that people do in metropolitan areas from a gender perspective, and this is mostly women's mobility. So this is a work that we have been um, sharing and creating with this network. It's a cost network called Gender STE uh, that I'm sure we've been working on this uh, for four years. And uh, uh, we also uh, do trainings and all sorts of things. If those of you who know the cost programs, I'm sure are familiar with the sort of things that we do. And very recently, just a couple of weeks ago, we have created the UNESCO chair in the School of Architecture at the Technical University of Madrid. Uh, with this, uh, these uh, uh, groups of activities, which are uh, and the, the normal or uh, general kind of activities that UNESCO chairs do, and we're starting to work on this and incorporating all the ongoing activities and projects that we have uh, on gender and science and technology. And I would like to mention this particular one, which is a very innovative project that we started a couple of months ago, and we're going to finish it in the next uh, few weeks, and it's a uh, a project for the Basque government. They have asked, asked me to uh, make a rec recommendation on how to integrate gender, a, a program of action and, and measures on how to integrate gender into the territorial guidance. This is like the regional plan in UK terms for the Basque country. Uh, uh, the Basque country is really uh, in the frontier of both gender and regional planning in the world, not only in Spain and in Europe, I would say in the world. They have had this regional plan for 10 years now, they are updating it and getting gender into it. And if you look at the gender statistics in Europe, the Basque country is right, if you separate it from Spain, is right after the Scandinavians in gender equality measures by all, by all measures. <laughs> uh, so this, uh, this work is, uh, is going to be presented in, uh, in October. 
uh, in uh, the Forum for Gender Equality that uh, Makunde, which is the Basque Institute for Gender Equality, uh, does every, every year. And uh, there will be a, a whole day where we will talk about gender in city planning and we will present uh, this uh, initiative of the, of the Basque government. And then, uh, just to finish, and you see the thank you there, so <laughs> it's the last one. Um, I, uh, we're having uh, the, our final conference for the Gender ST Cost Network in October in Madrid. And uh, we have received here about 120 um, papers, uh, uh, academic papers, uh, 18 of them on structural change of research institutions to improve uh, gender uh, participation and, and, and gender equality. Uh, and uh, we are going to have a first day uh, with a panels, a pa uh, a plenary sessions with very, very uh, high-level speakers from, from around the world. So for any of you who would be interested in both structural change of research institutions uh, f to improve gender, which is our topic, it's one of the topics of, uh, of, uh, of our IE tools, or in a broader aspect on gender in the new urban agenda and, and the sustainability and sustainable development goals agenda. Uh, I, would, I would love to, to see any of you in Madrid. Thank you very much. Thank you.